Welcome to ATV TV for this week. It's uh, out with the old and in with the gold. The boss is working and uh, I've got Dean Yandel in. Welcome, Dino. Hi, guys. We um, will touch base hey, on... Oh, good, mate. We'll, we'll chat about your career, which is... Geez, nearly spanned 30 years now. Yeah, getting close. As you push, as you push into your late 30s. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> anyway, mate, um, hot on fire too. You uh, rode four winners at Hamilton the other day. I'm not sure if you've ridden since, but um, I think Matty Stewart, your big mate, said that was, I think, seven winners from the last 14 rides at Hamilton. So, been a happy hunting ground for a long time, Hamilton, for you. Definitely. Yeah, obviously. Been around there a few times. It's actually only had like 700 rides on the track for 116 winners or something. Crazy. Yeah. Good strike rate. Did you ride five or six there one day? Yeah, five there once. Yeah. I was there that day. I can remember taking the photos. And you had a six. Yeah. Is it a six at Mildura? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Mildura. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, mate. I'll, um, I'm just going to go through our runners. We've had, I think, three or four seconds for our runners over the week. Um, Supreme Thunder was second at Mooney Valley uh, with Archie Alexander. He made the call to scratch from Cranbourne to go to, to, to the Valley. Got beaten by a better one, but um, he was good. Same, um, same day up at Rose Hill. Write your name, ran around. Not sure if you've been on him, Dean, with Archie. Don't think so, maybe. Uh, uh, he, uh, talk about the, yeah, <laughs> there's a bit of a theme here of you beating our horses this week, too. <laughs> he got, uh, it'd be like a little kid in the schoolyard getting bullied. All the Sydney jockeys absolutely smashed him. I think he got checked four times. We had Kira McAvoy on. It doesn't matter when you got a Melbourne Cup winning rider on. If the opposition are against you, uh, you're not going to win. And he just had no luck. Finished seventh, beating two and a half lengths. So that was disappointing. Jericho Cup day. Did you ride a winner down there? I think you did for Lindsay, didn't you? Didn't Someone. Hey? No? Uh -huh. Weren't there? No winners. Uh -huh. Actually... <laughs> I can't remember now. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, we, two of your rides okay. ago. Um, we had Maisie Motion there and she was disappointing. Laura Lafferty Rader and uh, look, she's gone 600 out. So you can't spin too many excuses when you're that far, you're uh, gone that far from home. So um, she's at the crossroads, might head across the border. Now the borders are open, send her to Panola or Narracourt and you might have to get Chris Dane on her, mate. If we can What's the go there? Can we get across? Uh -huh. right. um, well, we know the tra the, tra uh, the trainers can come over. Yeah. But that they can come over. It's just been the horses. Yeah. Uh, before the um, borders were shut. Yeah. But I think, I don't know if the Adelaide borders back open again after the few cases they've had over there. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Anyway, um, we might have to... isolate. Just cutting in and out a bit there, mate, but I think we're okay. Um, move on to Hamilton. This is where you've upset the ATB owners. We had Cracksman and Street Baby. Both ran second. Both ran second to horses ridden by D. Yandel. Start with Street <laughs> Baby. Uh, I can't think of the name of the Mick Price horse. I think it was Spring Break or something like that, was it? That's yeah. it. Just go around. It won well, Dan. I think it's. I think it's a smart horse in the making. Smart enough, yes. Yeah. Our street baby. That was her third placing in a race. So Daniel can find the right race. I don't think Declan Bates did too much. He tried to grab over your cape, but he couldn't get close enough to to uh, run you down. So um, she had to settle with another placing. But a win's not far away. Cracksman, I think. Um, I know Lindsay didn't want to say it, but Laura may have got a little bit keen a bit early. <laughs> Yendel grabbed hold of her coat tails and yeah, I think it was Simon Ryan's horse. I can't think of the name, but uh, yeah. you're just too strong too late. 
or too strong late, should I say. Um, yeah. Cracksman's going to uh, Geelong today week. They have to get D Endel on. I think he'd suit you, mate. <laughs> He's a horse that you need to get rolling early, but you got to sort of... He's a bit shy of hitting that winning post, so you've sort of got to time it that you can get him rolling, but then have something left in the end in the locker. But uh, he ran another place, and so he's not far away. Uh, Wednesday, we went to Sandown. We had Sea Princess fourth with Anthony Freeman. He would, she was good. Just probably needs to get out in trip. Uh, another horse, you've ridden her a bit. You weren't on. We had D Oliver on. The King was on, but it ran last. Collectible. I think you've got the best record on her. Uh, I think, uh, a couple of places you had at Flemington with a... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You um, Once you flew home at big odds. and Anyway, she... Yeah, I don't know what to make of her. She hasn't won for... 12 or 15 months and they're trying to knock off that city win then retire to the breeding barn but there might be more chance of me winning a race I think <laughs> and yesterday we had Cracker Jack Lady first up Johnny Allen got uh, you were kite no you weren't Johnny Allen got side swiped on the home turn probably cost him for running third but her run was okay um, so there are runners three seconds hey mate just back your career where do all start for you uh, Drillery, New South Wales. Mentored by? Ken Sweeney. Ken Sweeney, yep. So that would be 30-odd yep. years ago? Yes, definitely. Can you remember your first ride? Yeah, um, on the racing.com, it, it says Epsilon, but... Not right? It was... No, I don't know where they get that info. I have ridden the horse, but a horse called Grey Berber at Berrigan was my first ride. Yep. Winning ride, first winning ride? I think I ran fourth by memory, fourth yeah. or fifth. Yeah, it took what, me about me fourth or fifth ride to ride my first winner. I've got some great photos there because I interviewed you once at your place and uh, some photos there of a little bloke in his suit going to the races. I, uh, <laughs> I, could dig, if I could dig them out up, I might put them at the end of this program, but yeah, many years ago. So uh, 20,000 odd rides later, Two and a half thousand winners later, three group ones. Is that right? Six. Six, six group ones. Where'd you get those other three? Can you name them all? What's that? Uh, Weedy's box, I said. Oh, yeah. So the winners are, what are they? What are the group one winners? The uh, first one, Yankee Rose. Yep. David I'm Van Dyke. Yep. Yeah, I'm a star. Um, Charles. Yep. Santa Ana Lane. Um, obviously, uh, oh, bloody Lindsay's horse. Um, oh, yeah. Of course. The, yeah. The, um, oh, yeah. Chopper. Yeah, Scales of remember. Justice. Scales of Justice, him? yeah. Yep. Uh, and um, what was the other one? So we've got Santa Elaine, Shoals, I'm a Star, Yankee Rose, Scales of Justice. Was it one at Caulfield? Oh, Booker. 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 Was that at yeah. Caulfield? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So six group ones, um, and obviously a lot of stakes races. Ridden in the Melbourne Cup half a dozen times, yeah. four times? Yeah. yeah, four or five times. So if Eight. you... I miss that. I ran eight. My eight. My best spots running eight. Was that the uh, 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 Hawks's thing? Yeah, no, I yeah. was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So if you wind back the clock and you said twenty, thirty years ago that that would be your career, you'd have to be happy with what's unfolded. Oh, definitely. Uh, can't complain. Obviously, a few broken bones in between, and a few kick in the asses, and a few sprays, but it's all. Been <laughs> Would most of those sprays have come from DK Weir? No, nah, he's easy. He's mellow, that guy. <laughs> Actually, just speaking of that, obviously, um, uh, just looking through, you got three rides. I think you've got a ride tonight and two rides at Pakenham Saturday. It's just hard to imagine that you've only got three rides across two days 
It's got tougher. Yeah. I, I know the wear factor is big, but it's just got yeah. harder. Part of my uh, language, but fuck, it's just been terrible lately. And it's got nothing to do with COVID. Yeah. What it is, with, what we believe is a lot of jockeys are going to race meetings that they've never been to f- before because they're struggling to get rides themselves and they're going for one or two rides. Well, even them, the guys that from metropolitan area are getting out into sort of, you know, the well and truly provincial tracks to try and earn a dollar. It's, yeah. it's the only way they go about it at the moment. So there, now, Obviously, there's a, many jockeys as well. There's a shitload of jockeys in Victoria. There's a lot have moved, haven't they? I mean, we see Brad go yeah. for different reasons and heap yeah, going to Queensland. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a couple of going to Queensland and yeah, Brad the WA otherwise. That's just the uh, dog eat dog, really. Yeah, I noticed the top twenty. I had a look. I think I'm not too sure who's leading the, the overall Victorian. Um, it might be Jamie on forty five wins, and I think number twenty in in the list is twenty five wins. So it's very compressed, isn't it? And I think you're about twelve on the on the scale. So, yeah, obviously, yeah. a lot of rides getting spread, and that probably meets up with what you're saying. They're travelling everywhere to get rides. Yeah. 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 Um, like the likes of Daniel Stackhouse, he's been there, and even Craig knew it. Like, yeah, yeah. Going right at Horsham and Swan Hill and them joints. Who would ever think you'd see him going there? No, that's Little right. Little Michael, like Michael Rod when he was here. The composition of... We are obviously with his um, suspension and all disqualification. They were big days, were they, Dano? Like, I mean, you had to earn everything. You you couldn't. Well, I mean, a lot of people saying, "Oh, yeah, no, they just picked up the rides for weary." But you guys were riding trials every other day, and um, you yeah. had to travel everywhere. Yeah. You got well definitely. rewarded. Yeah, well yeah, rewarded, but you had to work for it. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, we used to probably gallop eight lots each and then do probably 12 to 15 jump outs after that and it was a friggin' long day and you geez you felt it the next couple of days um but look obviously if he did the work there we he stuck he stuck you on no worries and i suppose vice versa too if um you started dropping off you went down the pecking order because he did have six or eight riders you could lean on yeah 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 there was just Hello, we'll roll in to our runners coming up. Now, you're on our first runner, La Pietra, one on her at Sandown. She's a nice little filly. Um, we've scratched our other horse, Hasseltoff. I think you might have had the opinion that this filly was going to be held over to Sandown next week. But anyway, she's in <laughs> gate two, field of seven. I suppose you'll be positive on her tonight. Well, she began well at Sandown, so I'll just let her... Tell me where she wants to be. I'm not going to change her tactics just for the fact that it's Mingy Valley where they yeah. can go shit. Um, so I let her begin outside the leader like it was last time or 1-1 one, one or lead. It doesn't really matter. It's only a small field. Yeah. Wherever she's blocking. Um, just on tracks, what's, what is your favourite track in town, in the city? What, where do you like riding best? Um, in Actually, in the Metropolitan. But Metro, yeah. Okay. Um, Cause I reckon you, I reckon you ride Flemington well. Yeah, Flemington's been a, a good stomping ground. Um, like I haven't ridden a heap of winners at. Oh, I didn't haven't gone through my stats lately, but um, the city city meetings, obviously like thirty or forty winners in each at each track. But obviously, my better ones have been Flemington. Yeah, and your bigger wins have been. Oh, well, I suppose they're in Caulfield, right. haven't they? Yeah. 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 Uh, move on to Saturday. I think you've got a couple out rides at Pakenham. We've got Serious Suspect. You have been on him once. Spell that. <laughs> well, we won't talk too much. He gets his chance over 1,200, although it's a testing it's a testing track, Pakenham, and the 1,200, it's not like... Uh, it won't be like just gliding down the straight at Flemington where they sit up and go for the last four to 600. That's usually the pattern down the straight, isn't it? But it's... If there's any pressure on it, it'll be a long yeah, last couple a, hundred metres. Yeah, Sorry. definitely. Yeah. But he's there to win. Jamie Carr's on. Uh, Brad's obviously in Perth, and uh, you know, we've been expecting him to be fighting out the finish. 
Sunday, we've got an Irishman. Uh, ben Allen stays on. I think he's going there. He has drawn 10, but he's an on-pace runner. Sort of suits Werribee. Um, a decision will be made whether he runs there or goes to the Valley the following Friday. And then there's not much else. Monday's a race-free day, mate. No, uh, yeah. So you're going to have another day off. So that's about four days a week off now for you. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, our wrap. So you got four or five rides there. Trainers must, trainers must be struggling to find a decent jockey then. <laughs> and Wednesday, I think it's dual meeting. It's Tarang and Sandown. We've got horses like Igniter, Sea Princess, Lord Lennox, um, Loudspeaker nominated across that meeting and a few others. So I won't know those until Monday. All right, mate. Um, just a few, obviously, uh, behind a good man, there's a good woman, Christine. Um, a good rider herself, ridden in the air, probably ridden as long as yourself. Um, has all that work, two jockeys in the household. And, um, to be, yeah, it's, to be honest with you, it's been quite easy um, travelling wise, but it, since we've had Mia, it's been a lot harder. Christine, Christine obviously works as well, um, and now Mia's at school. Um, so we've got to work around everything. And with other family, uh, Christine's sister and mother, yeah. try and jungle, juggle things between us. But no, it's been pretty good. Um, obviously, her not being able to go to the South Australian meeting has been a bit disappointing because they are bread and butter. Yeah. Uh, not bread and butter, but she used, was usually getting good rides over there and a handful of rides to make to um, help with the wages and earn some money to put towards the kid, put her in school, keep her yeah. in school anyway. Because uh, for those who know, Mia me, me seven now, seven year old. Yeah, she'll be seven at the end of January. Because the other juggling act there, Christine obviously rides and does a lot of work with Paul Prishka, and um, you've got your own trials and jump outs and racing. So it is a big juggling act, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Um. Well, we touched on your Group 1 wins. Um, you've been really successful and you're probably... I'd love to do the stats over the last 10 years, but I think you would have rode as many winners as, as anyone for Darren and Liz and ATB. Um, we got to know each other back early 2010, but first real memory of a good winner was Exurious in the one game and then he doubled up in the Golden Topaz. That's it. That's it. And where we at the commercial that night, I reckon, for dinner. We, I've never seen a little bloke eat so much. There was a huge <laughs> chop. Looked like D-Day the dinosaur with his big chop. And then you went the, oh, you might have had soup before that. And then the uh, dessert at yeah. the commercial. Yeah, the golden topaz. And that was interesting because that was the day he got loose. That's you got right. off, I fell off, yeah. fell off going out <laughs> And Matty Williams in his moon boot trying to trying to uh, <laughs> chase him down. And thank Christ, the horse turned around and just trotted back to us, didn't he, at the gates. Yeah. And uh, you're able yeah. to get back on and win yeah. that. So that was the sprint double of 2011, I reckon that was. The one goon win was a huge win. Yeah, I remember that day? Because you got rolling about 600 out and he never looked like losing, although they, uh, they were getting close on the line. But the big salute and... Uh, <laughs> That was big celebration. I think you were staying at Lady Bay that night. We were celebrating um, down below. It was probably the first time I got to meet Darren and Liz. So it was uh, big parties for Beetroot and the crew. Yep. A lot of other ones you're reading for us, but probably not too many notables. But I, was, I quickly went through, and I reckon there was 60 or 70 winners I could at least find across the last eight to nine years. And a couple of those were for myself. The old grey that had square wheels, silver stratum. Uh, Rachel's yeah. favourite. What's that? <laughs> Rachel's <laughs> favourite. Yeah, Rachel's favourite. But yeah, no, look, there's been plenty of winners and we um, really appreciate it. Probably hasn't been as prolific in recent times. I mean, we used to always have 30 or 40 horses with Weary and that's where yeah. the combination used to um, come together. Um, I haven't got too much more, mate. Well, just appreciate you being able to get on and um, 
Yeah, just outside uh, racing. Golf's a big thing with uh, with yourself. Yeah, yeah, love the golf. Love the golf. And uh, Phil Britton loves a fact, one of our owners. I think you know, Phil, that you're a mad Essendon supporter. Not that that's anything to be yarking about at the moment. A bit like Carlton. Uh, a bit like any, go- any footy team, I think. Um. Anything over the, I mean, I know you only got a couple of rides at Packenham. We've got La Pietra. Hopefully, you can win on her. But any chances your two Packenham rides? Are they uh, any hope at all? Uh, yeah, Kira May. Kira May, I think, is my best ride. She's in the last race. Um, she worked well the other week. He was going to race her at Warnable the other day, but he decided to go to Packenham. That's Matthew uh, Williams's. Yeah, yeah. And then he's got his other horse, um, Brian Codset. His uh, horse goes all right, but geez, he's hard to, hard to get a handle on how he goes because you're kicking the guts out of him the whole bloody trip. <laughs> right, yep. Like a bike. Um, what was I going to say now? Just talking to Matthew Williams, you've had a great association with Matthew over the whole journey that I've known, uh, ATB and yourself as well. And along yeah. with Simon Wilde and now Lindsay Smith, sort of Warnable's. Um, fairly prolific for you. Yeah, obviously, and Simon. Yeah. Uh, so that's basically who, I, who I've been really riding for is Simon and Matthew at the moment, and Mick Price's horses with Matt with Matthew's pre-training and, or pre-training and racing from his stable. So basically, they're the real th- top three trainers that I'm riding for with the, the most horses. Um, not riding as much as for Lindsay as I was. Um, but hopefully that'll turn around. Yeah, well, I'll try and get you on Cracksman Friday week. That'll be a start. Get it over the line and um, build from there. All right, mate. Look, thanks for your time. Um, appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we'll... Uh, ATB and D Yandel, there'll be many winners to come. And just uh, outside that, all the best. Um, you. You've probably got another 14 or 15 years of riding. Nifty Rachel, he was in his 60s. Surely you're going to... Craft out another 15 years. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Good on you, Dana. All the best for the weekend. Okay. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Mate.